Hello, I am Pastor Ernest L. Deese with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. As always, I am humbled and honored to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for being the great I am, the awesome one. And Lord God, I thank you how you undergird us and move us forward. Lord God, I thank you for how you are blessing the nations. In spite of it all, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father, we are praying that you bless this class and the hearers. This we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. I always praise God for our church members and those that partner with us, our well wishes, amen, our supporters right here in the United States, amen, and across the world. I thank God for all of you who tuned in, amen, to share with us the word of the Lord. Today, I want to talk from the thought freedom. Now, that word freedom has a lot of meaning to a lot of different people. Many have fought and died on behalf of freedom. Amen. And Jesus Christ for us, amen, died and bled and suffered that we all may be free from sin. Our focus thought today Amen. Freedom comes with responsibility. Amen. Freedom comes with responsibility. Our focal verse is coming from John chapter 8, verse 36. Therefore, if the Son make you free, you shall be free indeed. Our scripture lesson is coming from St. John chapter 8. Verse 31 through 36. And it reads on this wise. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Thank you, Jesus, for the reading of that scripture lesson. I just want to kind of give us a definition what you might call a workable definition of free and freedom. Free, not under the control or power of another. Not under the control or power of another. Able to act or be done as one wishes not or no longer confined or imprisoned. Thank you, Jesus. Free. Also, I want to give you a definition of freedom. The power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. The power or right to act speak or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. Now, 
I am reminded of the story of the bird in a cage. Although the gate is open, the bird refused to fly out. The locks were off the gate, but no doubt the locks were still on the bird's mind. Can this happen to any one of you? God has paid the price of our freedom from sin on Calvary's rugged cross. We have the power to move freely and to explore all that God has given us. But many have lived most of their life like a bird in a cage with the door wide open. At any time, they could have found their way over to the opening and soar to new heights and explore new horizons. Think about what I'm saying. And if this is you, perhaps it's time, amen, to move forward towards that door, that gate, amen, and enjoy all that God has put before you. All along, they have known how to fly. No one clipped their wings. So what kept them in the cage? Their own fear. Is fear keeping you in a cage? Their own self-imposed limitations kept them in that cage. Think about yourself. God wants more and has more for you. Are you your own prison guard? Jesus Christ paid for your freedom with his blood and eventually with his life. In our text, Jesus set a woman free who otherwise would have been stoned to death. However, with her freedom, and watch this, Jesus set limitations for her. He told her, go. That was her freedom. Go. Then he said, sin no more. Those were her responsibilities. Freedom comes with responsibility. Go, her freedom. And sin no more. This is your responsibility. Think about it. Today, those who have been born again, the Son of God has set you free from the bondage of sin and the works of the flesh. But we have, uh, we are still allowing circumstances. Think about this now. We are still allowing circumstances. We are still allowing situations. We are still allowing relationships that may or may not be sanctioned by God to keep us caged in. God wants better for you. God wants better for you. But you got to want it for yourself. Because we have not believed all that the gospel has said. And our mind has not been transformed to the mind of Christ. Our guilt Low self-esteem, doubt, fear, lack of trust, and the list goes on. Keeping us locked in the cage of our own mind. Don't you think it's time 
to move forward. Don't you think it's time to connect with Jesus Christ and enjoy the freedom he's given you? We are free. Thank God for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We find in verses 12 through 20, the people claim that Jesus was making false claims. This is the eighth chapter of St. John. The people claim that Jesus Christ was making false claims about himself or who he is. In that case now, who he was. People will also try to define you. Yes, they will. They will try to define you and tell you that you do not know who you are or whose you are. They will try to make or to, they will try to take your freedom from you while claiming to have your best interest at heart. If you let people box you up and box you in, you may find yourself like the little bird in a cage with the door wide open, but are afraid to fly based on what and who others have defined you as. Remember, and this is very important, remember, God knows who you are. God knows you. Let me show you how intimate God knows you. We find in Psalms 139, verse 13 through 16. Listen to what it says. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body. All the delicate inner parts of my body. And knit me together in my mother's womb. God did that. God knows you inside out. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. Look what God has done. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. God saw you when you were coming together in your mother's womb. He knows you. He knows all about you. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Thank you, Jesus. Every day of my life was re recorded in your book. Thank you, Jesus. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. God knows us. He knows what we can do. He knows what we are, are capable of. Your word tells me that I can do anything, everything through Christ who gives me strength. You can do it. God has given you the freedom. He's given you the wherewithal. Don't let people box you up and box you in. Let them define who you are. God knows who you are. You tell them who you are. I'm a believer. I'm a child of God. I have freedom to think. I have freedom to express myself. I have freedom to do and do what God is asking me to do. We find in Philippians 4.13, how it tells us that, yes, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Furthermore, I decree and I declare that God has plans for me. And I believe that God has plans for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you and me a future and hope. With the wings of freedom, coupled with godly responsibility, the sky is your and my limit. No more chains holding you down. Thank you, Jesus. We find in verses 21 through 30, Jesus tells the people that if you do not believe what I am telling you, 
you will die in your sins. Wow. Wow, that's, that's pretty tough there. If you don't accept what I'm telling you, Jesus said you will die in your sins. The same is true today. It is not Jesus' will that any should perish. Jesus loves you so much. But that all should come to repentance. He wants you to have a change of heart, a change of mind, and turn from all that nonsense and turn to Christ Jesus, accepting him as Lord and Savior. Jesus loves you so much. You find that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. As Jesus continued speaking in verse 31 through 36, Jesus said to those Jews who believe, if you abide, and I love this, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Now, if you abide, it, that reminds me of this past Sunday, Minister Tommy Palmer was talking about God's love language. And I believe everybody has love language. God lets us know his love language. Amen. Keep my commandments. Then you can be my disciple. If you love me, do what I ask you to do. You know, we cannot please God with our love language. What was expressed so beautifully this past Sunday by Minister Farmer. Uh, you know, we can't please others with our love language unless our love language and their love language is the same. We need to find out what, what our, our amen, partner's love language, our wife or husband's love language, and they need to find out what our love language is. You cannot please somebody else with your own love language if, your, if that love language is not the same as yours. God tells us what his love language is. He said, now, if you abide in me, if, in my word, you are my disciples. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's God's love language. Amen. Amen. And it says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's the truth. And what is truth? God's word is truth. Thank you, Jesus. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. You can, <laughs> how, how can you say you will be made free? So Jesus began to break it down a little bit for them. Jesus answered them, most assuredly, okay, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. If you continue in sin, if you, if you are living that lifestyle of sin, then you are not free. You are a slave to sin. You are a slave to the flesh. If you continue doing the things that displease God. We find in Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 2, it tells us, shall we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Shall we? The Bible says, of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? If you say now that you have turned from the world and all that it stands for that's against God, if you've turned from that, if you've died to that, how can we continue to live in it? But thank God that the power of sin has been broken. Thank you, Jesus. The gate to freedom is open, and I encourage you to walk in it. Do not let sin control the way you live. Think about it. God's word, amen, is freedom. God's word is truth. Don't let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. 
But here's something that can, that can combat that. Here's something that can help you. And that is, instead, give yourselves completely to God. You got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. Let us come back, amen. Now, as we look in our scripture, let's come back to John 8, 35. It says, as we move toward our, as we move toward our conclusion now, a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus has set the captains free. We have the opportunity to be no longer bound. Lord, I thank you. We can do according to Psalms 139, and we can do this. It tells us, search me, O God, and know my heart. Don't you want God to search you and know all about you? Actually, he knows all about you anyway. But avail yourself to God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. Lord Jesus, can we do that? Ask God, Lord, point out in my life anything that offends you. Because if it offends you, Father, I don't want any part of it. I want to die to sin. I, I want the freedom that you have given me. I don't want sin to dictate my lifestyle. I don't want my flesh to dictate my lifestyle. I want my lifestyle to be dictated by your Holy Spirit that lives in me. I want to please you. I know your love language, obeying the word of God. So this is what I want. Lord, point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Remember, remember, <clears throat> free, not under the control or in the power of another, able to act or be done as one wishes, not, are no longer confined or imprisoned. Jesus Christ, amen, set us free, amen, from sin. Freedom, the power, our right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. Lord, I thank you. <clears throat> I, I, I recall in Romans 6, 16, it says, don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? Think about that. If you obey sin, you are a slave to sin. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to life. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. The Lord loves you so much. And I pray to God that you would choose the one that leads to righteous living. In this new life in Christ, we have freedom from sin and all of its symptoms alongside responsibilities that come with our freedom. Jesus said, after being free, go and sin no more. Even if you make a mistake and sin, Jesus still loves you and gives you a chance, an opportunity to get it right. If you confess your sins, amen, and forsake them, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God loves you. And I say to all of our listeners, when you hear God's word, <clears throat> whatever state of mind you are in, just know that God loves you and showed how much that he loves you on Calvary's rugged cross with an arm stretched wide hanging between heaven and earth. 
showing you how much love he has for you. Whatever you do, humble yourself. Accept the direction that God is leading you. Remember your, amen, road to salvation and your recovery to wholeness can start with repentance, a change of mind, a change of heart, and turn and move and go toward, amen, your Savior, Jesus Christ. And remission of sins, receiving the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And live a righteous life. In other words, we all, we all must be born again. Those are, those are the words of Jesus Christ. Of water and of the spirit. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? I ask you today, will you surrender? Amen. Your will to Jesus today and stop procrastinating. You just, amen, taking chances with your life. I pray that we've said something that will bless you. For your continued growth in God's word, we have in-person school of knowledge at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And we definitely invite you to come on in. Amen. Enjoy the word of God with us. Enjoy worship with us. We will be delighted to have you. Amen. We have in-person worship on Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m. and online word empowerment on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please share with your friends on Facebook and others. For more information on the plan of salvation, amen, you may feel free to call 678-759-8989. Let us pray. Gracious Father, oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you dearly, oh God, for giving us your Holy Spirit. We thank you, oh God, for walking and talking with us along the way. And Father, we thank you for freedom to choose to do righteously. And we thank you, Lord God, and we accept the responsibilities that come along with it. This we pray and we thank you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May God bless you richly.